What happens to 97% of the stars in the universe when they die? These are all the average mass and lower mass stars. What will come when their time is up? So let's monitor what happens when a star like our sun is dying. Some 5 billion years from now, hydrogen fusion will slowly start to deteriorate since there isn't much more hydrogen to fuse and helium is building up in the core. When there is no more hydrogen to fuse, the core contracts, heating it and the thin hydrogen layer surrounding it, starting hydrogen fusion outside the core. Meanwhile, the outer layers of the sun swell to over twice their current size, since when you heat a gas, it expands. So it becomes a red subgiant. And it is red because it will radiate less energy per square centimeter than it used to. Hence, cooler stars are red. But this process isn't finished. The core keeps contracting, and the sun swells up even more, up to 10 times its current size. Now, it is officially a red giant. The problem with being a red giant is that it has tremendous luminosity. However, its gravity is weaker. The force of the luminosity acting outwards easily overpowers the force of gravity, causing a supersolar wind where the sun sheds a third of its mass. The core keeps contracting until it finally reaches helium fusion time. Helium fuses to form carbon, oxygen, and a bit of neon, creating tons of energy. Then the core ends up expanding, absorbing most of that energy. Because of that, less energy gets into the outer layers and they then contract. Then as if someone hit rewind on a TV, the same thing happens, only this time helium is fusing and the carbon is building up in the core. Due to helium's wild fusion characteristic, the sun loses a bunch of mass, eventually stripping itself down to the core. And that is how a white dwarf forms. Now, white dwarfs aren't ordinary objects you encounter in the universe. Instead, they have bizarre properties that bend reality. White dwarfs are as big as Earth, with around half the mass of their star. That means that it is super dense. About one centimeter cubed of the white dwarf matter is one ton. That is an immense density. Due to its enormous mass and such a small volume, it has around 100,000 times Earth's gravity. Since they were the cores of stars, white dwarfs are extremely hot. They are one of the hottest objects in the universe. But wouldn't that mean that it is super bright? Due to its extreme heat, it radiates white light, and its luminosity depends on its size and mass. Still, it can range from 100 times the sun's luminosity, or it can be 1 10,000th of the sun's luminosity. White dwarfs range in size and temperature, its core being from 5 million degrees Kelvin to 20 million degrees Kelvin, which is pretty hot since it has no fusion left. Wait a minute. If there is no fusion, it means that the star can't contain itself from dying or from staying stable, since in a regular star, fusion is what keeps it going and steady. Well, white dwarfs have another weird property up their sleeve. They convert gravitational energy into thermal energy, keeping them warm and fuzzy for an extended period of time. I mean, it takes them trillions of years to cool down. But something has to keep them stable for trillions of years. Using the science of quantum mechanics, astrophysicists have determined that something weird happens in the cores of white dwarfs. Electrons are separated from the nucleus of atoms, and electrons do not, I mean do not, like to be squeezed together. They rebel furiously. So the immense mass pressing down on them won't collapse the white dwarf, due to the nature of electrons. This phenomenon is called degeneracy pressure, and it's a nice thing to have when an enormous mass is crushing down on Earth-like volume. So white dwarfs can have huge masses in small spaces. Shouldn't there be a limit? Actually, there is. However, to explain that, there is one thing you need to know. When a white dwarf accumulates more mass, for example, in a binary system, which we will cover in a future video, it gets smaller. Why in the world would it get smaller? Again, quantum mechanics comes to the rescue. The more mass a white dwarf has, the electrons squeeze tighter to save the stars from collapse. So since they're getting smaller, there is a limit to how massive they can be. This limit is called the Chandrasekhar limit, and it is equal to 1.44 times the mass of the sun. If a white dwarf reaches this limit or passes it, it goes boom. 
into a supernova! A feature video topic, but you can read more about them on the blog. With a mass limit for the white dwarf, there is also a limit on how massive a star could be to form a white dwarf. This limit is around 8 solar masses, so pretty huge. I mentioned a couple of times that a white dwarf has a core. What is the structure of a white dwarf? Isn't it just the core of a star? Well, when the star is dying, there were shells of material around it. We had the carbon and oxygen core surrounded by thin helium and even thinner hydrogen layer. This is all that is left of the star, hence it is ultimately the structure of white dwarfs. The core is superheated liquid carbon and oxygen, then a helium layer, and finally a super small hydrogen atmosphere. So far we have been focusing on the dead star's core. What happened to the gas that left the star so violently? The gas hasn't gone too far. Suppose the white dwarf has a high enough temperature, 25,000 degrees Kelvin. In that case, the radiation from the white dwarf excites the gas. It makes it glow, forming beautiful nebulae called planetary nebulae. They are among the most beautiful objects in the universe. They're typically 10,000 to 100,000 years old. Wait, what do planets have to do with this? Well, they looked like blue-green blobs through a telescope when they were first discovered. However, there is more to it than that. Planetary nebulae should be bubble-shaped, since all the gas expands at equal speeds, forming a circle. Some planetary nebulae are like soap bubbles, but most are not. How? What if something interfered with the expansion of the gas? If the star happened to be in a star system, a binary star system for example, where the stars orbit each other, this would swirl the gas a little, making it oval shaped. But what if the star had planets? There is a theory that it would probably swallow the planets, but it would take them millions of years for them to vaporize inside the star, so it continues orbiting. This causes some areas to spin faster, creating the beautiful shapes we see today. Unfortunately, the gas keeps expanding, and the nebulae will disappear one day. When a nebulae says goodbye to the white dwarf, when will the white dwarf say goodbye to the universe? White dwarfs are the remains of dead stars and have no fusion, but that keeps them warm and fuzzy for a long time, like trillions of years. So what does happen when a white dwarf dies? After a very long time has passed, the white dwarf cools down by a lot, so the liquid carbon and oxygen in the core start to crystallize. This means that the whole core may be made of diamonds. Can you imagine? Slowly, the entire white dwarf cools down to very low temperatures, forming a black dwarf, one of the coldest objects in the universe. The second corpse of a star. They are so black that they are invisible if a distant civilization would pass by. That is, if there is any civilization left. So when it comes to life in the universe, white dwarfs may be our best bet. Due to solar flares, red dwarfs are good, but unstable. But since white dwarfs have no fusion, they are super stable. This makes white dwarfs the perfect place for life to thrive in a cold, dark universe, providing a ray of hope in darkness. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was super fun to make, and I hope you learned a bunch of new facts to share with others. Until next time, bye!